Hey buddy, it's Miss Fuggy here coming out with another Borderland 3 video, or should I say Tiny Tina's Wonderlands video, because what we're going to be doing is going to be going over every single thing that we learned from the new trailer and the new AFQs. There's actually a little bit of information that some people haven't even talked about yet, so I'm a little bit late to the party. I know a few people have already reported this, but there's a few things I want to tell you that no one else has reported on. But before we get into it, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. You have no idea how much it helps me out and let's get into it. So before we get into the things that I don't think anybody has reported yet, let's go through the obvious. So first things first, the trailer goes through a lot of motions. It gives you a lot of information at once, but it does a great job at stopping on certain parts that are actually really important. So the first thing that it stops at is actually right after Tiny Tina rolls her dice, it's this real awesome image of all the races. And yes, I said it, races that you can pick. Now, the interesting thing here is that we did get some confirmation from the FAQ that there won't be a specific Vault Hunter that you choose. All these characters you see right here aren't, aren't Vault Hunters that you choose, but instead races. Now what you can pick out right here is, let me see if I can get a better image. We got two humans on the front. Perhaps this human is some type of variant of a human. Perhaps maybe, I don't know, <laughs> I can't even think, maybe like some type of elf. I would say that, but there's obviously an elf right here, so I'm not quite sure, but we'll just leave it as two humans. And then we got an elf character and an orc character. The reason why this is very exciting is because we don't have to worry about picking a particular vault hunter, which means that the gearbox can focus on balancing every single class, quote unquote, at once because there's going to be a multi-class system and there's going to be actually six skill trees that we get to pick for every single character and we can kind of theorize on what those skill trees would actually be, but let's actually continue on to the trailer and see what else we can find. So right off the bat, obviously, there's shark things, we got some spells, we'll talk a little bit more on that. But the real interesting thing I want to note right there, did you see how that guy pulled out a weapon? I want to draw focus to this, because if you look at how he is right now, he's sliding with a weapon in hand, which is a crossbow, which is honestly freaking dope. But the important thing here is that this guy is going to use a melee weapon and it's going to do something really interesting. It's going to start an animation and he's going to continue it and pull out his gun after the animation's done. But the real important thing that we got to focus on is that he's holding a gun in his hand. So that makes me think that the pieces of gear that we get from chests and enemies, you know, we have confirmation that the melee weapons actually drop like normal loot. So there's reason to believe that the melee weapons won't be taking up a weapon slot, but instead taking up perhaps the artifact or class mod slot instead. And how I believe it's going to work here is that every time you use your melee button, your melee weapon acts as a melee override. Now, if you remember in Borderlands 2, we had melee overrides where Salvador would give a middle finger, or if you're using gauge, you would do claws, you know, all these melee weapons, I believe, are going to be melee overrides that have short little cooldowns. So this guy's going to activate that, complete the animation, and then he pulls out a gun very, very slightly at the very, very bottom. You can barely see it. But he starts pulling out his weapon right at the end. And that's very, very interesting because it just lets you know that you won't have to worry about holding the melee weapon in your hand. So you can do your cool little melee animations while still having guns in your hands. But let's continue on to the video. So the next thing I want to actually focus on right here is going to be right at the 43 second mark. Now before we talk about what this guy's going to do, I want to show you some images in the trailer where we can see a rack following the player character. So right after mushroom caps start attacking you, you can notice at the top of the screen you see this little rack with a little white outline. Now a white outline is usually shown to us in Borderlands 3 as Flax Pet. So I believe this is going to be a pet. I believe there's going to be a possible tamer class, like how we have mul there's confirmed multi-classes. So there might be an action skill tree or something that is dedicated to tamers or something like that. There's multiple times besides this image where we can see a rack following the player. At this part of the trailer, after he pulls back the hammer, we can even see the rack over here flying around. And a real cool thing I want to find for you is that there's a point where the rack actually breathes fire onto the enemies, which is really, really cool. Let me show you. Right around a minute 46, I'm going to slow down the video for you real quick so we can see it. We can see the rack in the background right here breathing fire on these enemies 
which is really, really cool. So we're gonna have maybe like a familiar system or even just a pet rack for one of the classes. And why I think that it might just be familiar system because we do actually have one other part of the trailer where we see someone being followed by a little weird head. And that could be anything really, but I think that might just be a clue on the multi-class system of summoner or like familiar summoning or something like that. And then if you go to the 44 second mark, we can see this guy channeling a spell and I'm gonna slow it down for you real quick. This guy channeling spell and it shoots out a rack that creates a singularity and explodes with a shock explosion, which is so cool. So you can empower your pets sort of like how we empowered our pets like with Gamma Burst with different elements it seems and they do different effects and I think that's so cool. And then the other familiar that I want to show you real quick is actually with the girl that has the big AOE like of red right about here we can see this little dude in the background it's so weird this little dude we don't see him anywhere else in the trailer he looks like a necromancer pet or something maybe we'll have like a necromancer subclass like i don't know i'm just so excited to see what subclasses are the, the six skill trees are going to be i'm just so excited i love rpgs i'm a big fan of like world of warcraft and type of this type of stuff and it's basically a perfect blend for me for <laughs> borderlands Borderlands to combine into RPG elements. I love it. I'm just so excited. And then real quick, I want to draw focus to this part where Torg is actually strumming his loot, I believe it's called. And there's these mushrooms all across the map. And we know that there's these mushroom enemies. So at this point, at a minute 34, you can see these mushrooms have two little slits on them and like over there as well. It's possible that these may be like little eyes, it's possible that this is just a, a hint that hey these mushroom enemies are going to pop up out of the ground and run at the player character like we've seen in the trailer. The only problem with the series is that the eyes of the mushroom enemies, instead of it being below the cap, it's actually above the cap. Let me show you. Like right here, the guys have the eyes actually above the cap, so that might just not be right, but it'd still be cool if they pop up out of the ground like we've had with like spider ants and stuff. But <laughs> let's get on to more exciting things. A real exciting part and my most favorite part of the trailer is this little part here with the soda can and like I'm guessing maybe Cheetos in the background or something like that. This is obviously Tiny Tina's campaign map like the overworld and, and the bridge is actually a bottle cap which is really really cool. This is obviously like the overworld for like a, a d and session map because like some dungeon masters are really dedicated to make little maps and she obviously accidentally got some food on her map or something to create this little scene which I think is so cool. Maybe we'll have some environmental changes as we play of her going uh oops I just dropped something onto the map or something like that. And what's really cool about this part here is that we see once again, there's a dice, so there's another example of, you know, her campaign map being on the table and she just has a dice there or something like that. But we see this very interesting thing where we have the galactic brain modifier on these guys or something like that. They have bigger heads <laughs> to put in the simple forms. And they're walking around in like an overworld. So I believe this little section here tells us that we can, instead of having the fast travel map system, we're going to have this little overworld system that we walk around to get to different areas or maybe between maps as you're lo uh, before you load into the map, you actually go into this little overworld to find little chests and stuff. And right here, we see another D20 right over here and some popcorn and stuff like that, <laughs> which is just so cool. I love that. But real cool thing here is that they open up the loot here and hey, more bottle caps and a, a thumbtack. But anyways, they open up loot here. So while you're going around the area, you can get loot. It looks like there's going to be just regular currency rewards. Right here, it might be gold bars, but we've seen that the money drop is actually little money bags that come off the enemies. Right there, you can bar you barely saw it, barely saw it. You see right here, you can see little money bags, right? Which has a little gold symbol and then the gold bars, which also has a gold streak. So it's possible the gold bars is also more gold, but it'd be cool if the gold bars are just a recoloration of Iridium and now we have a different currency like that. But now that I look at it and that they both have gold streaks, I kind of feel like it's just money, but it's still cool that we can get money on the overworld while we're traveling in different maps. That's so freaking cool to me. And real quick, here's a, a really good image actually to look at. So right here, we see this weapon called, I'm very bad at pronouncing things as you guys know. Yeah, I think it, this is supposed to be pronounced fear, 
for <laughs> I know it's the the regular is Tedior, <laughs> but it's like it starts with an F instead of a F or something like that. Whatever, whatever. Maybe you guys can tell me how to pronounce it. But the awesome thing right here is that we know in the bunkers and badasses board game that manufacturers are actually replaced with guilds, which replaces the manufacturers' real life names with fantasy names. And we already know that in the board game itself, that TDR is renamed to this Ferior or whatever. If it follows the same exact theme, we can already say all the names that are going to be the new manufacturer names because of the bo Bunkers and Badasses board game that we have. It tells us that Vladoff is Stoker, Jacobs is Black Powder, Dahl is Dahlia, Malawan is Malfactor, Bandit is Skulldugger, and Hyperion is Hyperius. And the final funny thing is that Torg is still Torg. Is pretty funny because Torg does have a hand on Tiny Tina's campaign. You know, he seems to be like a little fun character, main character or something like that. In the story, he's the Bard Barian. So it's still named Torg, the Torg weapons, which I think is hilarious. I know a lot of people already showcase the spells and everything on other videos but i do want to still talk about the spells it looks like we have like an aoe flick iridium strike or like maybe like poison strike it looks like they're like skag ele slag elements because there's a little poison cloud i think that's so cool the other spells that we have is the bird singularity as i said before it looks like we have a polymorph ability when he transforms this little shark into it kind of looks like a sheep skag it makes a ba noise which is a common effect sound when an enemy is polymorphed in rpgs so we kind of have a way to transform people into sheeps <laughs> in this game which is awesome i'm so excited to see how that interacts if we can still damage the character or something like that see if there's more better versions of that we see here there's like a twin cast spell that's like shock and fire or maybe even cryo and fire we see another melee override here with a big spin we see a big eruption with fire there we see this big aoe with the maybe blood or like just red or whatever and then we see this big melee override with the big hammer and we got bows we got freaking bows guys i cannot believe we got bows i love bows in rpgs i one of my favorite things to do in a lot of rpgs is to play a bow master or like <laughs> like someone with a bow so i'm super excited to see what the bows are did you see that right there i'm just so excited i'm sorry <laughs> Dude, he's shooting two four six seven arrows at once that's freaking crazy i'm so excited and it looks like it's a conjure thing so maybe bow is another one of the skill trees there's sk six skill trees and i'm already thinking that we got bow and familiars so perhaps or maybe even like it's 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 not even familiar is it's like pet bow and then necromancy because we did get that weird little skull on dead guy but i'm just so excited to see what they actually are in the end and then another really really important thing i want to showcase right here as i said before we know that there's going to be melee weapons dropped here we can see tons and tons of melee weapons we can see a little katana a sword a hammer another sword like a scythe there's a buzz axe actually uh hold on there's a buzz axe right Right there, right there, you can barely see it. There's a buzz axe, guys, that's crazy. And there's like a mace, there's a weird scimitar, axes. We see hammers, we see big two hammers, two handers, I mean. And as this is dropping, I know, as I said before, that spell, we know that spells are gonna take a replacement for grenades. So obviously they're gonna have crazy amounts of variance as much as grenades had. So as we're watching this, we can see actually tomes being launched out of the chest as well here's a good pause screen right here here's a tome or maybe spell they'll call it i'm not sure what to call it oh and hey like a glaive right here anyways back to spells <laughs> the spells are going to be randomly generated spells it seems which is really really cool which m guarantees that we'll got a lot of fun stuff i'm sure they'll find a lot of creative ways to get different spells it looks like there's so many spells in the game so there must be like a huge selection of amount of, of random generation with the spells which i'm just so excited to see and then since we're done with the actual trailer itself I'll go through each and every little piece and show you guys what you probably already know but let's actually go to the afq which tells us a lot about the game more than you would actually expect as i said before Four, we know that there's going to be multi-classes and six skill trees now this faq actually confirms this this is the only reason why i really know that right here it says includes a multi-class system that lets you mix and match six unique character skill trees that's crazy right now in the game we in borderlands 3 we can get down to two end caps and then one middle cap so if we can do that with a mix of six skill trees 
with any race we choose, I'm just hyped to see the amount of variety and build diversity that's going to come from this. I cannot wait to see what the community makes with this. It just sounds so crazy that we have this much selection to choose from on each character. That's so awesome. And like I said before, all these character skill trees are going to be the same skill tree on every single race. It means that developers are going to have a much easier time balancing the skill trees, which means that hopefully, hopefully it means, it doesn't mean that it will mean, but hopefully it means this will allow for all the skill trees to be balanced in a way for all of them to feel as impactful and powerful as one another. So I'm super excited to see that. And if you keep reading down this or even looked at the pre-order bonuses, we know that there's all these different customization options like armor presets, face presets, makeup rack, makeup pack, dead banner sets we got banner sets statue materials stuff like that and right here a legendary spell and a legendary weapon which kind of you know even more reinforces that the weapons and spells are going to be their own little item slot slot on each character just in case you had some doubts but <laughs> i don't have any doubts on that personally <laughs> but back to the armor presets banner and statue materials if you keep reading the faq we'll actually learn what each of these actually means so armor presets and armor themes are going to be purely cosmetic everything we're talking about right now is purely got cosmetic none of the armor presets or makeup or cosmetic the banners or statue materials are going to affect your gameplay they're just purely cosmetic so we're going to get tons of armor selections even if you watch the trailer, you'll go through there and you'll see tons and tons of armor selections. So many cool little gears that the guys have. All the armors on each race looks amazing, I'll say that. And then the face presets, obviously, kind of like heads, you know, <laughs> that's kind of obvious. The banner sets are going to be customizable banners that we're going to see in the main hub, which shows up every time that we do an emote, which is cool for co-opers. And it's really, really cool that it, it, it displays in the main hub because I believe we can actually see the main hub in the trailer when we see Butt Stallion run here. We see this little town here. I believe this is going to be the main hub. We'll may Maybe we'll see Butt Stallion, which has really cre creepy eyes when I look at it, uh, <laughs> running through the main hub. This will be like our next sanctuary or something like that. And that's where actually our hero statue is going to be. The hero statue is going to be in the main hub as well. Once again, it doesn't affect the gameplay or anything. It's just going to be a statue of you, I would assume, that you can customize with its own material we have some pre-order bonuses where we can have quartz diamond and one other i'm i'm pretty sure one other but i can't find it on this page right off the bat materials that we know what colors we're gonna have and i'm definitely gonna do diamond i cannot wait to see my badass character in the main hub as a big statue get praised and stuff like that here's actually a really good example of one of the armors and how it looks i'm you can use it on any race i would assume one other thing i want to talk about before i really finish because i could talk about this game for hours I I love RPGs. I'm just so freaking excited to see what we're going to get more into this game. I cannot wait to see more and more being released. I'm just so excited, buddies. You have no idea how I'm excited that I am for this freaking game. But one last thing I'll tell you about is that there's actually, if you remember back in Borderlands 3, right before it was released, like a couple months before it was released, you could sign up for a shift account code like thing to unlock like a specific head or like start your game with like some legendaries and stuff like that. There's actually something like that for tiny team does wonderlands right now if you guys want to get that you'll get the wonderlust armor which is this pretty looking armor right here the all you got to do is to subscribe to the newsletters and digital marketing from 2k and gearboxed and you have to do it with a verified 2k account if you've done it on borderland 3 you should have no problem as long as you remember your username and password which i do not remember i'll be honest so i need to remember that so i can get this and make sure you have a verified shift account and all you have to do is just log into your shift account when the game releases and you'll have this piece of gear. So don't miss out. This expires all the way into December 31st of 2023. So you guys have plenty of time. Don't worry about having to rush to get it, but remember to do it. Nevertheless, I'm going to personally do it today, actually, so I don't forget. Obviously, I can't redeem it until I log into the game, but the game's not released yet, so I'll have to wait for that, but I'm still going to prep for it. If you guys found anything in the trailer that I did not mention or someone else in the community did not mention yet, please comment it down below. I would love to talk about this game with you guys. You have no idea how hyped I am. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I hope y'all have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>
And the last shall be First to immerse in a pass out heat Facing him up with a moxie melt Till he woke up drowning in tchotchke hell Born a cave with a torch on a wall Then a window arrangement of porcelain dolls